This category is strongly underpinned by services that enable efficiency and optimization in the delivery of goods to consumers, whether in the form of software management platforms or tools to optimize delivery routes. The session will be moderated by Manik Bhatia from Coresight Research in India, and will be joined by Lior Sion, Chief Technology Officer of Bring, and Orly Glick from Vintage Investment Partners. So what is it in reality? What am I talking about? Uh, the end-to-end -end retail logistic solutions that we, we enable not only allow you to do it um, fully uh, and provide options at the checkout, already at the e-commerce side, allow your customers to choose you, their best uh, delivery option or fulfillment, pick up from store, um, you know, deliver the same day, deliver next day, depending on price and, and availability. We synchronize your, your inventory uh, the, the fleets that you're using, you know, if you're in the US, DoorDash or Postmates or maybe FedEx or UPS and so on and so forth, we synchronize all of these with the personnel in, in the store. Uh, we allow you to save money and uh, using multi-fleet dispatch and routing. Uh, we allow you to use your, um, your employees, your store employees if needed in, in, uh, and if that's an option for you. And then to unify that with preparing the delivery, do curbside, click and collect, and manage drivers. Uh, all of that in single platform, uh, providing real-time customer experience. And when we talk about real-time customer experience, we're talking about the things that customers want and actually demand today. They want to know an Uber-like experience of where is my driver? When are they arriving? What is the delivery window? Can I reschedule? Can I return my items? And so on and so forth. You want them to be able to have this experience. Uh, you want them to be able to take control, but at the same time, you want to be able to control what they control, in a way, if it makes sense. The, the Bring system connects all of that into a BI suit, um, which, where you can analyze the different performances of your stores, of your inventory, of your customers, of the different fleets, so you can get to the ROI and understand what is happening in the logistical chain. So, and who are we and wh why we can say that? So Bring is, was founded in 2013. You know, I'm not gonna dive too much into who we are, just to show you that uh, we have the experience uh, across the board. We are deployed in more than 50 countries. So it's an international solution. Some of our customers actually deliver multinational. Um, and we have, a huge hub of net network of, of warehouses and, and fleets. We serve the biggest customers in the world that you can see from the logos, uh, different solutions. Uh, what we think is most important is that we bring to the table a highly sophisticated technology, but we work together with the enterprise and with, with, the, with our customers to provide custom experience to, the, to their customers. The idea here is that when we're talking about customer experience, it has to be personalized to the brand, to the retailer, and to their relationship with the consumer. Um, there is no one solution. There is a good solution that provides you the ability to do as a retailer what the retailers need to do. And that's a very big differentiator um, because we believe that we have the knowledge and the capabilities to bring the logistics and retailers understand their brand and what they want to serve to the customers and together we can achieve a winning solution. Um, there's time for Q&A. Q I don't know if you want to open this uh, to everybody or we can go jump to, to our session. Thank you for your insights, Lior. I have a few questions for you indeed and, and thank you for the presentation. Uh, there, there's a lot of talk going on about the customer experience uh, and even you mentioned it maybe twice in your PPD how customer experience is, is so important and which is why last mile delivery becomes so important in the supply chain. So in this how do you think last mile delivery enhances customer experience and, and what could lead to customer retention in this field? Yeah, it's, it's a good question and I want to emphasize something. So. Customer experience, why is it so important? What is customer experience? Customer experience is everything the customer, um, every interaction with a brand is customer experience. So obviously a lot of it is, is not related directly to last mile. It's the e-commerce, it's the branding outside. All of that is customer experience. I think for years, we've been working on the e-commerce side and the branding and the marketing. 
Um, and, and eventually what happens is that when that, that's perfected and that works well, the customer is ordering something from a, from a website and then the experience disappears. Before Bring, uh, this experience disappears and th there, are, there are no good choices of delivery. Um, and there are, uh, in many cases, customers would say that what they want is to choose what they, what they want to deliver. They want to know if they want to pay higher cost to receive something faster or lower cost to receive it slower. They want to be able to choose the delivery window um, and they, they want the, the meeting between the driver or the delivery person or the courier to themselves, whether it's personal or a doorstep delivery or, or you know, to a, to a nearby store. They want it to be well managed. Uh, Amazon paved the way and Amazon has an amazing experience. They allow two day free shipping and now in some places uh, one day free shipping. And when customers are facing that option, which is experience, they, they can buy at a retailer directly um, uh, or they can buy an Amazon and receive it the same day, the choice is obvious for them um, because it's easy and customers want easy. Experience is about easiness and trust. Um, in order to battle this, in order to face it, you have to provide trust and options and, and this is what we call customer experience. At the same time, you have to make sure it's efficient and you make money as a retailer. And that's the, the difficult combination. Thank you, Leo. And uh, that's something that I would like to agree upon because Amazon uh, is leading the way in, in same day delivery and Walmart is following suit as we are seeing the delivery wars, uh, as you put it, because uh, Amazon prime day delivery, same day delivery is available in more than 8,000 cities in the US right now, which is big. So, so there, there's a big push towards the same day delivery. But when, when we are focusing on same-day delivery and faster delivery, of course, there's this cost that needs to be optimized. So mm -hmm. how do retailers and brands focus on cost and what are some of the measures that could be put in place for cost optimization? Yes, and, and I think just, just one point on, on one-day one delivery. So Amazon you know, was the first to introduce two-day delivery for free. It was, I don't know, 12 years ago. Um, and they were the first to try and introduce last year the, the same-day delivery. They, they invested or they said they're investing $1 billion in, in order to get to that one day delivery. Um, and you know Amazon and you, uh, and, and you know they work with numbers and they have a lot of experience. If they are willing to invest a billion dollar to get to one day delivery, um, the upside, the money that they are making from it has to be bigger than that. It has to be, otherwise they would lose. Um, and, and that's something to consider. Um, how, do they, how do you get efficiencies um, and how do you fight that as a retailer? Um, you know, it's a giant, Amazon is a giant. So there is one advantage that retailers have um, that, that Amazon doesn't, and that's real estate. Uh, we, we have the stores, we have, um, we have people on the ground, um, and, and we have the, the loyal customer base. Th those, are, those are the things that, that you know, work, work for the retailers. How do you, how do you make that work? in a two-fold attack. Basically, the, the stores are edge warehouses. If you use your store for delivery um, as a kind of an edge warehouse, if you understand that the, the inventory there and you replenish it on time using prediction algorithms and so on and so forth to make sure that the right inventory is in the right place, one day delivery becomes a much, 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 much more cheaper um, opportunity. You can offer a same, same hour delivery using an external fleet like DoorDash in five, with $5 you know, cost, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. Uh, this with the customer loyalty combines into cost of acquisition because if you offer those things and you offer them in a very good price and with the Leon, same day I would, delivery. I would have to interrupt here because we're running short on time, but thank you so much for your insights. Mm -hmm. They were very helpful, and especially on, on Amazon towards the end. Uh, I would quickly wrap up this session, but I have, a, I have one last question, which I want to put for early click. So only we are, uh, based on your experience, how are you seeing uh, the investment change uh, in the last mile delivery space? And uh, post, post this pandemic, how do you see this, this sector shape up in terms of investments? Oh, that's a long answer. I don't know if I have the time. Investment in, in, in deliveries are, are growing up, you know, in, in the last... Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, that was for early. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Hi, Leon. 
thank you so much, Manik. It's, uh, it, it is indeed a long answer for the three minutes that we have, but uh, ha happy to answer that. Um, look, pre-COVID, pre we saw at Vintage a lot of requests from corporations to find solutions for um, supply chain logistics in general. And th this is something that we haven't seen, you know, five, six years ago. Uh, what we do is we basically work with hundreds of corporations, we understand what they're looking for, and then we go back to all the, you know, thousands of startups that we have exposure to. And pre-COVID indeed, we saw a huge increase in the request for innovation, and that's still not on the investment side, it's on the business side, um, to find solutions to help from the manufacturing through the supply, ch uh, supply chain and logistics. Now, when, when that ecosystem starts happening, when it's coming from corporates and they want to find solutions, then funding comes in. So when you connect those dots, in the past few years, there is more demand for funding in supply chain and logistics solutions, also manufacturing, all the way back to manufacturing. And suddenly there are more startups that are doing phenomenal solutions in supply chain and logistics. So this ecosystem is amazingly growing. You know, what we've seen that is happening through COVID and recently is that this is even increasing. And everybody that spoke here really well about, you know, the need to be closer to the consumer, the increase in e-commerce, the increase in uh, uh, the need to buy products uh, uh, parallel to Amazon. All of these are uh, requiring, you know, great solutions. And thus with that comes the large uh, need for, for funding. But... Um, I don't know if you have other questions, but I would love to add a few things that we do see that corporates are looking for uh, because we talk to something like 450 corporates on a regular basis. We see that, you know, customer um, consumer sentiment is really critical here and consumer sentiment now calls for impeccable service. And that was mentioned a little bit uh, before impeccable service in, in, in last mile delivery. We also see that um, corporates are asking for, you know, really help with uh, coping with customer support. So with that impeccable service, there starts being um, pressure on customer support because everybody basically works from home, also the customer support. So we're starting to see customer support and you know last mile delivery and supply chain logistics throughout that chain, a huge need for that. Also adapted delivery. Um, we see a need in funding also and a need in startups and solutions for you know specific solutions for cold food, fast delivery, uh, you know versus slower delivery. I mean think about consumer sentiment. I'm connecting it back to consumer sentiment. People now, especially, you know, everywhere are kind of in lockdown in the U.S. with everything that is happening. You don't really care about, you know, um, how your strawberries, you know, look like. You really more are thinking about survivorship uh, in, in general. So how do you adapt to consumer sentiment in supply uh, chain and delivery? So these are kind of the things that we see on the, on the funding side as well. Thank you, Orly. Those were some interesting insights. And uh, thank you, Leo. Uh, we had some wonderful insights and with this we're running short on time so i would uh, wrap up without the concluding comments i would pass it on to ben jong for now okay well thank you manik batia for moderating this session of course to leon sion and orly glick uh